Well, hi again, everybody. This is your moment of hope. A reminder to you that every moment of your life as a Christian is a moment of hope in Jesus Christ. No matter what's happening in this world, no matter what's happening politically or the afflictions that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, you have an eternal hope in Jesus. And so as we dive into that today and consider that for a moment, the question might be on your mind, who wins? Who wins? Maybe that's a political question now. Maybe it's a question in some other realm of your life. Uh, but I think a lot of people have that somewhere in their mind, the question of who wins. Well, the Apostle Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians that we do. We as Christians, as followers of Jesus, we triumph because Christ triumphed. In fact, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, Paul says this, But thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession. Right? Thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph. And I just want to give you that picture of the word triumph that, that Paul was likely thinking of and, and trying to communicate to us. A, a Roman triumph was a, the highest honor given to a victorious Roman general. And so this is the picture that Paul has in mind, where to um, acquire, to be given a, a triumph, a triumphant procession, a Roman general had to have commanded an army, he had to have finished a campaign that was victorious, uh, and that now had that region under Roman rule, pacified in that way. The troops that he commanded had to have been brought home, he had to have defeated, so 5,000 of the enemy had to have fallen, at least 5,000. The uh, Roman territory had to have been extended in some way, and it had to have been a campaign against some foreign foe, not civil fighting within Rome itself. And so then, with all of these different things met, he could be, uh, be bestowed this highest honor of a, a, a Roman triumph, a triumphant processional. And here's what the processional would look like, this, this picture, this image that Paul's sharing with us about triumph. Uh, it would have gone through the streets of Rome, all the way to the capital, and first out in front would have been the officials and the, the members of the Senate, so right, all the politicians out in front. Uh, and then would come the trumpeters, uh, making a, a, a wonderful noise. After that would have been all the spoils of war, so all of the things taken from the conquered land would have been paraded through the streets as well, all the riches and that kind of thing. Then would have come sacrificial animals that would be sacrificed to the gods for the victory that uh, the Romans felt that they had given them. Um, and then would have come the captives from the, the conquered land uh, who would likely soon after this processional, this triumph, uh, have been thrown in prison, maybe even executed. After that would be the musicians playing the, the music of triumph as they walk through the streets. And then the priests would follow them, kind of swinging their uh, censers of, of incense and, and dispersing this kind of sweet aroma throughout the crowd. And then comes the victorious general himself in a chariot uh, led by four horses wearing purple and gold and with a scepter and so forth in his hand in victorious procession. After this victorious general would then be his army. So then his army would come after him, following him in this triumphant procession. And so this picture, this image is kind of what Paul is referring to when he says, thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us in triumphant or triumphal procession. Right? In other words, thanks be to God who leads us in the procession. Christ is the victor. Christ wins. Jesus is triumphant, and we follow along. We walk in His triumph. No matter what happens in this world, we walk in His triumph. Christ always wins. And we know that anything in this world, nothing, there's nothing in this world that can separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus, who is triumphant and in whose victory we walk and we live. Right, we don't know uh, what's going to happen in the coming days, weeks, years, hours. We don't know all of those things. We don't know who's going to win elections or anything else. But we do know that Christ Jesus, our Savior, has triumphed even over death and has eternal victory. And so we walk 
in his triumph no matter what happens in this world. He's the source. He's the anchor of our hope. But more than that, that verse continues, and Paul goes on and he says, And through us, as we walk in this triumph of Christ, and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. So through you and me, walking in the triumph of our Savior Jesus, no matter what happens in this world, God spreads that fragrance, that sweet aroma of the knowledge of Christ Jesus everywhere. That sweet aroma is manifested through us so that others might might know of Jesus and might walk in His triumph today and tomorrow and throughout eternity. That means that you and I, no matter what happens here in the, in the temporary, you and I have the privilege of having eternal influence in this world as we walk in the triumph of Jesus. For we get to share and spread and be that aroma of Christ Jesus in all moments of our life. Because after all, every moment is a moment of hope in Jesus. As Paul also writes in Romans, he says, Then may the God of all hope fill you with joy and peace in believing that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope.